same way that, you know, the programs that were extremely racist, which was a way of sort of saying, oh, yeah. no, this is harmless. It's just, I mean, I've had people say really hideous things to me as a woman, you know, bitch and all sorts of other insults, just because I've maybe had to say no to something that they wanted me to do that I didn't want to do. And very soon it's turned into an extremely aggressive situation with them saying nasty things, which they disguise as jokes. But so isn't that, you, that but, but you know, in that case, we'd have to get rid of all profanity, wouldn't we? Uh, no, not all profanity. If you say bloody hell, that's not... No, but we have to get rid of it, profanity that is aimed at, you know, if you were to use, you know, a, a terrible four-lettered word to somebody. I mean, some some words can be used as a noun, some can, can be used as a an adjective or a verb, can't they? Yeah, but still, the majority of swear words do not necessarily, are not denigrating someone else for being a second-class human being. Yeah, but if I were to call so, somebody a lousy and then use the F word, I mean, that's pretty... Uh, pretty derogatory, isn't it? It almost doesn't get It's still much. not hate speech. It's not... Isn't it? It's not... No, because it's not uh, about their particular class of people. That's the difference between hate speech and just general profanity so when you you're can, shouting at someone. So we have to say general, even if we... Even if somebody used the ultimate four-lettered word, um, that would be... That even that. Well, the ultimate four-letter word. If I think, if I, if I, if I'm getting yeah. your drift right, you're obviously uh, not going to say. Is actually a sexist word because. Well, yes, I know. Yeah, that's also a piece. Yeah, yeah, I know. I know. So it's ultimately, that. if there is a problem with that particular group of people mm. experiencing violence as second-class inferior people, then you, as the user, have to question why you're using that particular word and what may be underlying it because in the end we can all sit there and go oh yeah but I wasn't using it that way but to deny a word or a series of words so you can't use a word that have is a history okay is so so it's where the roots are what it means could you really get away with that with that particular word could you really say that because it has uh, genital based connections and connotations female yes yeah, female female connection means that and if it is often used as a way of frightening intimidating or silencing a person through gender then yes you can say but it has in the same way that batty Okay. has a problem because of the fact that so many people die and that's the last thing that they hear here as they're kicked to death. It has a problem with that fact because, as I said, of its use in violent attacks. But if it's not coming from a bad place, if the person isn't you can't yeah, but that's like using an extreme, extreme so, okay, profanity well, and saying, but I wasn't using it in a profane way. Well, you have to be aware that other people, you're not just on your own in the world and you can't reinvent words and have, say, well, they don't have a history what, behind them. What if, there's going to be some people listening to this, Vicky, and they're going to be thinking, mm. that woman needs to get out more. She's thought about this too much. How would you respond to that? I would say that as a person that counsels people that has, have been through domestic violence, I would sit there and go, you don't use words without being careful of what they might mean to someone else. We are talking it's about whole... knowing... Of course. It's about having respect for other people. If you don't use the N-word and you don't use it for very good reason because of the fact that people have experienced violence and that, that word is associated with violence, then there are a whole load of other words that are also associated with violence. Listen, Vicky, thank you. Um, interesting stuff. I know that you will probably have divided the room on, on much of what you've said, but it was fascinating to talk. Thank you. 0345 606 But then you think about how mates talk. You know, me and my girlfriend, some of the things we say in jest to each other... I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't be able to say them on the radio because I would be, you know, removed from the airwaves. Um, and you know, it's kind of the moment when your girlfriend, you walk down in the morning and just comes out with a phrase, and you just want to collapse laughing because it's so funny. But under Vicky's rules, a lot of that would be uh, would, would be taken away uh, and wouldn't be allowed. And my other half would be in jail uh, for for such uh, verbal nonsense, old potty mouth. 
0345 6060 973. Uh, let's just feed that back into the uh, the question of the original point, uh, which of course is about uh, the use of the word gay, whether you find that offensive when it's used as an insult. I keep using the example, you've got gay shoes, you drive a gay car, uh, you follow Manchester United, that's a bit gay, isn't it? Uh, is that offensive? Uh, Vicky, our last caller, was saying it's all offensive if it, if it singles out uh, individuals uh, for whatever reason. Uh, and it's important that you nip this kind of stuff in the bud. If you don't, then we're in trouble. What's interesting about that is a survey suggests 18 to th some 3,000 18 to 29 year olds were quizzed about their attitudes towards homophobic language, and half of them thought the phrase using gay as an insult was not offensive at all. Uh, your thoughts on that? Where do you go with other words? They mentioned the word faggot. 28% thought that was acceptable. I am really surprised by that. The the fur the, the the gay issue. Um, I, I can kind of mull that one over a bit more, but the 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 other, uh, I'm struggling with a little bit. Um, why is that? I think that's where Vicky is on to something. Uh, but where do you apply it? Where do you not apply it? 0345 6060 973. More of your calls on the way on this in a few moments' time. Coming up a little later... St. George drew out his sword and slew the dragon. Wicked dragon, coming round here, your ways. Uh, and George, uh, slew, what did he do? Slew him. Slew him? Slew, that's right, that's a word you don't use very often, isn't it? Um, he slew the dragon, the nasty beast, but that's because he's St. George, he's the patron saint of England. Uh, why is it, I asked this question right at the very beginning, it's still a little bit taboo to celebrate being English. Will you be celebrating tomorrow? That's in 29 minutes time, by the way. LBC News Time, it's half past 11. With the latest, Victoria Bourne. David Cameron says Britain can play a role in strengthening the search and rescue operation in the Mediterranean to help the migrant crisis. He'll be taking a break from the campaign trail tomorrow to join EU leaders for an emergency summit in Brussels. A group of MPs is demanding allegations of child sex abuse against Labour peer Lord Janna be brought before a court. It follows the CPS's decision that his dementia makes him too unwell to stand trial. Lord Janna's family say he's innocent. The National Crime Agency has called a paedophile ring, which streams sexual abuse of children online, the most vile organised crime it's ever seen. Two members were convicted earlier of planning to commit sex offences. A jewellery heist in London's Hatton Garden over Easter say so they've only managed to contact six people who they think have had items stolen. 72 safety deposit boxes were broken into. You can see the pictures from inside the vault online at lbc.co.uk. LBC weather a misty evening with patchy clouds for London and the south east. It's less of five degrees. Clear spells for some central and northern areas before cloud thickening throughout the night. Patchy rain affecting parts of Scotland and Wales Tomorrow will be dull and cloudy to start with before turning brighter with highs of 16 degrees. From Global's newsroom for LBC, I'm Victoria Bourne. You can hear what I have to say on LBC, now you can read it too. I'm Ian Dale and make sure you pick up the new series of books from LBC's presenters. In mine, find out exactly what I think about an institution close to everyone's hearts, the National Health Service. No one is prepared to think the unthinkable the unsale, much less implement the rule. The NHS, things that need to be said. The new LBC book from me, Ian Dale. Pick up your copy now from Foils Bookshops or at foils.co.uk for the special price of just $6.99. For more details, go to lbc.co.uk. Ian Collins on LBC. Make it go away. Front page of the Daily Telegraph. The Miliband SMP pact would cost every family £350 each. Aren't you just so bored you want to eat your own face? One of the dark banging at you, it's going to cost every family. will cost £300 or £400. You vote for this party, and if you vote for that one, you're going to get this one. If you don't vote for this one, you might get a bit of that one, but they could go into an alliance with another party because they won't have quite a majority, so they'll have to get in that group of people. It's just a yawn fest on this. Man, 